The old adage, a broken clock is right twice a day. Well, Andrew Cuomo, governor of New York, and Chris Christie, governor of New Jersey, held a joint press conference last weekend, and they said, we're going to quarantine people for 21 days if they are a health care worker who comes from one of the three nations with the infectious diseases. Now, I want to say for the record, because it's important, both of these men would like to be president. And Andrew Cuomo is one of the most despicable men in politics today. He is Roman Catholic and yet cohabitates with his girlfriend, promotes same gender weddings, uh, wants unfettered child killing through all nine months of pregnancy. This man is a villain. And sadly, Cardinal Dolan up in New York has not had the courage to just say to him, look, you can't present yourself for communion. If you're going to behave like this publicly, you cannot come to communion. But I digress. Chris Christie, on the other hand, I think is just a little bit more conniving, a little bit more deceitful, and a little bit more opportunistic as he plays to the right wing of the Republican Party. But at the end of the day, I, th I believe that he is a wolf in sheep's clothing an establishment Republican who would use the issues that matter to us to get our vote, but has no intention whatsoever of altering the course that this nation is on. <clears throat> Having said that, for both of them, they had a joint press conference and they said, we're going to quarantine healthcare workers. So the first lady to fall into their new guidelines is this woman, Casey Hickox. She was returning from Sierra Leone and was around many people who were sick with Ebola. She wrote a story for a piece for the Dallas Morning News in which she recounts giving uh, Tylenol and some other medication to a young girl trying to suppress her fever. The girl died. She was with her. Uh, her family wasn't with her. Some heart-wrenching stories. So she was held in the Newark airport. And it was clear that the Newark airport officials did not know what to do, all right? So President Obama's assertions that we have all this in order, are, are, it's laughable. She ended up being there for seven hours, forcibly detained, all right? And they gave her a granola bar and some water to drink, all right? So she was quite upset with it. And one person after another, some who identified themselves, some who didn't, came in and questioned her and questioned her and questioned her. Finally, she was taken to a hospital with eight police cars, all right, sirens and lights, eight police cars in a convoy, taking her to a hospital where she was admitted to a tent. <clears throat> they put her outside, I'm not making this up, in a tent. Now, it was climate controlled, so they'd rigged up some AC, so that was nice of them. But it didn't have a shower. It didn't have running water. They had the, that little like plastic, you know, go on a camping trip toilet for her to relieve herself. And she was not a happy camper. So she wrote a piece for the Dallas Morning News. And I've got to read some of these responses to you because as I scrolled through them, there was over 5,000 comments. 98% of the people who responded were blistering her for complaining. You look, lady, you went, you served these people, God bless you, but now you have to deal with the consequences. You cannot just come here and risk infecting your fellow Americans. Here's some of the, what people said. While not highly infectious, why don't you show some compassion and understanding to those in the U.S. who are nervous and concerned, rightly or wrongly, than lashing out while not highly infectious, why don't you show some compassion and understanding on us? <laughs> Another person said, she's narcissistic and selfish. Another person wrote, if Washington bleeding heart liberals do not want to back a quarantine, maybe they can invite her. <laughs> they can invite the returning health care workers to their home. Well, over the weekend, uh, the White House weighed in and pressured Como and pressured Christy Todd Whitman and they said, all right, well, let's clarify our position. They have to be quarantined for 21 days, but it can be in their own home, all right? 
Then this morning on the news, you had national press saying that healthcare professionals and Washington insiders are alarmed at the way she was treated. You know, I'll say this in closing. I think that quarantining them is a right thing to do. It's an ethical thing to do because as much as they want to tell us they have this under control, they don't. And as much as they want to tell us that they have this disease down pat, I'm not sure that that's true, as we've seen from the CDC. But to put a woman in a tent without a shower, that's just stupid. I mean, you're going to have to pay for this gear anyway. Why not run? My, my son, my 12-year-old son says, Dad, why don't they just rent some cabins? some nice cabins on, in a little country setting and put them in there for 21 days. I mean, good grief if a 12-year-old can figure it out. It's going to be a lot cheaper than building a makeshift quarantine tent and at least she can go to the potty properly and take a shower. You have two choices. I mean, you can try to raise your children by design, or you will raise them by default. There are no perfect parents. We're gonna get it wrong sometimes. If we have a plan, we've got a better chance of getting it right in the long run. There is something deep within the heart of every human being that longs for parental acceptance and approval. When does a boy become a man? Get a group of guys around and ask them that question. I don't think there's a certain age. Some men stay boys their whole life. I would say, uh, what? 16, 18 years old. Wow, that's a good question. When they get bar mitzvah? Well, I think when he has a child. So I just became at 56, yeah, 56 years old. Without the power of the Holy Spirit changing us and giving us power over our sin, we can't hope to be the dads that our kids need us to be.